What is up guys, my name is Awesome, welcome back to a brand new reaction. Metallica literally just dropped a new song about four hours ago. I have heard a little bit of it due to my dad playing it and waking me up with it. But um, without further ado, let's get into Screaming Suicide. It's the third track of the record. It references suicide and the how taboo the word is. I don't know how like lyrically heavy this song is. It could be a ballad, I don't know. All I know is that it's pretty heavy, and people say it's a little bit better than Luxy Turner, and people adored that when it came out. So let's just get right into it. I'm very, very excited to what they actually do. Third track of the record, and the last one was the fifth one. Let's get into this. Volume is up. Let us go. Screaming Suicide. Is that a Rorschach thing? It's like major -y type shit. What's that rum riff? Some like a low type riff. Ooh. It's like the Luxy Turner riff, but it's just a little bit more oomphy. It has that, that, uh, going back to the fir first fret, which is pretty cool. Very hard wide type riffage as well. Yeah, very kill em all type riff. Hard hit the lights as well, like the Buxy Tenor. While lead by Kirk Z Ripper. I just like the chromatic going up up the neck. That's a funky riff. This is a funky riff as well. It's almost like it gets off the offbeat. That's like now that we are dead. What's happening now? I hear the bass getting up in the mix. They're doing the... Doing the... A, G, B, I don't know what that is. Okay, way better solo this time. Kinda spoke to you soon, but that's pretty cool. Did that just do? Did he just do the full horseman lick? Did it? Oh. Has he done that in another song before? I think he did. Maybe in one of the Beyond Magnetic songs. It's 
Damn, another like bridge type riff. Okay. No, that's Atlas Rise. No. Moth Moth into Flame? Moth into Flame type of riff that it reminded me of. That, that riff. Same director as the last video. Shut up, bud. Well. Not a ballad as what I thought it would be. Um, heavy riffs. That main riff, very hit the lightsy, Luxy Turner type, type thing. A little bit more oomphy than Luxy Turner was. I understand why it's a single, because it's a go get em type uh, riff, lyrical content. Well, lyrical content was quite heavy, but it would be a fun song to listen to and to play, and that intro was quite major y, and I wasn't expecting that. Um, yeah, that title, Screaming Suicide, I did not think would be like this at all. And it's kind of. Not underwhelming, but it's kind of upsetting how similar the riff structures were from Loxy Turner. I understand they're both singles, so they could be similar, but if the entire record is like this, it's going to be one of those repetitive, mega boring type records. And Kill em All wasn't like that. Um, got two songs already having the same Hither Lights type of main riff, and it's kind of disappointing. But this riff was better, in my opinion, than Luxie Turner's main riff. Don't mean to be annoyed and do nitty-gritty type stuff. I just want this record to actually sound good and be good for me after listening to this band my entire fucking life. Um, but I, di I did like some of those uh, obscure riffs in the mix. I I wanted, I probably wanted Rob's to have some more difference in the in the riffs, like how Cliff was in early Metallica days. Look at Sig and Destroy. Um, but the drumming, solid vocals, sounded pretty, actually pretty good. Um, don't really have any more criticisms for the song. It was just a good listen. The solo was actually pretty, pretty good. It was just one part where didn't really like it. But then it came back to a good proper lead with a melody type. He actually knew what he was trying to go for and it wasn't necessarily just improvising for that solo. Then at the end there, he probably, yeah, I don't know if he actually did it, but it sounded like that Four Horsemen trill, but it's just the tritone going down the, going down the um, six strings. Could be not, but it sounded like that. But um, let's just read what they have said. All right. So, Screaming Suicide addresses the taboo word of suicide, says James. The intention is to communicate about the darkness we feel inside. It's ridiculous to think we should deny that we have these thoughts. At one point or another, I believe most people have thought about it. To face it is to speak the unspoken. If it's, the human, if it's a human experience, we should be able to talk about it. You are not alone. I glimpsed through that before I listened to the song. That's why I thought it would probably be more ballady type thing. And thought be heavier in some regard. But at the end of the day, I'm still happy what the song is. It's it's leaps better than Luxie Turner. They're both memorable as it as it was. I really want to see how they 
play this live because this is more down picky as what Lux Eternal was, which was a um alternate picky type song. You can hear James's voice changed a bit, but that's not a bad thing at all. It perfectly fits the song, and I really hope that there will there will be more songs like this one. I'm inclined to agree. James sounds like he did in Loxy Turner, how he does sound live, and how he kind of sounded like in Hardwired. However, I do like the riff changes in the song, but if it's like the same repetitive nature as what Loxy Turner and this one was, as what I said before, the record for me will get boring quite quickly, as this is basically a double record, a 12 track, uh, 12 track record. I really want some very variedness to the songs. I want some clean shit, some distorted, distorted heavy stuff. But then at the end of the day, Metallica is Metallica and whatever they do, I'll appreciate it at the end of the day. This is the Metallica songwriting I missed from the Black Era. This song is very well written and it is good to hear someone shed some light on such a serious topic. I can't wait to hear the rest of the album. I don't know if there's any lyrics on this. No, it's not. Oh, shit. They actually have the uh, suicide hotlines throughout different countries. Uh, US, Australia, Denmark, Germany, New Zealand, Norway, the uh, UK. Oh, here's the lyrics. Yeah, I wasn't listening to the lyrics per se. I was listening to the riffs because I'm a guitar player. But maybe the next times I listen to it, I'll listen to dig deep into the lyrics. Because the last time, the last couple of times I did lyrically heavy songs, I think would have been Sane Anger and Load. Like, think back to The Unnamed Feeling and uh, Our Little Torn and Fixer. Those were heavy, heavy, heavy lyrical content, and the riffs complemented that. But this song didn't, the riffs didn't complement the heavy nature of the lyrical content. Which makes you conflicted when you listen to it. Is it a cheerful song or is it not? But at the end of the day, good song. I'm probably going to listen to it again and again and again. Learn the song. Um, don't know if we'll do a cover of it. And I think as of recording this, Curtis has done a cover on it. So if it is, check that shit out. He does the probably the best uh, old guitarist covers on all of YouTube. Especially with uh, Trivium and Metallica. And even uh, Iron Maiden and Death. Um, to check him out. I already shouted him out in a couple of videos. But yeah. Um, there's really nothing much else to say. I like the song. Kind of hoped. I mean, I could, it was cool that they had two different like bridge type things. Like they had... They did the solo in one. Then did some lyrics in that same like rhythm. Then he did another type bridge type riff talking into the mic as opposed to singing like how we did with in unnamed feeling but not exactly the same but yeah i don't really want to nitpick even more because i want to like this record <laughs> and again it sounded exactly identical to uh, hardwired and that may be a downside like two records sounding exactly the same because like like kill them all all the way to justice have th four separate separate tones that are i that are identifiable when you listen to the songs but some of these songs could legitimately fit on hardwired and some of those hardwired songs could fit on this same because it's the same sounds the same tone has the has the same like uh mix level uh i mean but hardwired was a pretty good mix um i'm just hoping it did it would sound a bit, a bit more fuller. Criticisms out of the way. Um, but yeah, I like the song. Pretty cool. Wish it was heavier. Like, as in, like, not riff heavier. I mean, like, emotionally heavier. But what can you do? It's meant to be Kill em All. Kill em All is about... Fuck it. Let's just play some music. And that's what the entire record was. And that's what this was meant to be an homage for. But, um, yeah. My name has been Lewis, and this has been the second single called Screaming Suicide of Metallica's record 72 Seasons, which is coming out on April 14th. I will, I should pre-order it sometime soon, because there's like three different versions of the vinyl at JB alone, so it'd be pretty cool to own them all. Um, 
I didn't pre-order any other Metallica thing, unfortunately. But I do have the cool, the red vinyl for Hardwired. But yeah, I'm, I don't know when the next time they drop a, sing, a single. I'm, I'm assuming it'll be March, just before the record comes out. Three singles for the record, who knows. Really don't know what what it would be looking at the um, 12 tracks. So we have the, this is the third song, then Lux Eternal was the fifth song, I believe. Yeah. That's about it.